Praise the Lord. So good to see you all tonight. You can stand, sit, however you feel. We just want you to worship the Lord with us tonight. One, two, three. some tithes and offering tonight and thank you for giving thank you for being here on a Wednesday evening and we're going to plant some seed because we know this is good ground and if you'll stand with me please I appreciate that if you can and so we want to thank you for your gift tonight bless the Lord oh my soul
draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise somebody two three four folks just say hi everybody say we're glad to see you <laughs> praise God we're going to get into the word in just a little bit I, I always get excited about the subject I'm going to teach on tonight and we just call it reviewing faith and we want to talk a little bit about faith tonight thank you brother George all of you that have joined us by Facebook, we're so glad to have you be in the service with us. And I don't know of a, a better subject to talk about than right now than faith. So we want to talk about some things about faith. So let's talk about reviewing faith, revisiting faith. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, again, I say unto you, which means, boys, I've already said this one time, but you need to hear it again because none of us have arrived, not a one of us. So it's good sometimes to revisit some things. Sometimes things can slip. Paul said that in Hebrews. He said things can slip. And then we start loosely saying things that we shouldn't because things begin to slip. So let me remind you of a few scriptures tonight about faith. Hebrews 11, 1, very familiar verse of scripture, says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So whenever you are believing for something, it has to be by faith because faith is your evidence. Faith is your title deed. Faith is your proof. Faith is the deed that says it's mine even before it's manifested. Then in Hebrews eleven six, it says this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we cannot please God without faith. So if we're going to please God, we must make up our mind we're going to live by faith. Then in Romans 1.17, it says, The just shall live by faith. Then in Galatians 3.11, it says, The just shall live by faith. Then in Habakkuk 2.4, it says, The just shall live by his faith. So that tells me that God expects us to live by faith. Right? The Bible says that we are to go from faith to faith. So faith is the only way that we're supposed to live as Christians because faith pleases God. And when we're not walking and living by faith, we're not pleasing God. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It doesn't mean that we don't love God. It just means we're not pleasing God. Amen? So we walk by faith and not by sight because we're walking by sight when we look at things instead of looking to the word of God and not living by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, 
What does it say? For we walk by faith and not by sight. First John 5, 4 said, Whatsoever is born of God, it should be translated, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So if you want to be a world overcomer, you're going to have to live and operate by faith. Ephesians 6, 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, which will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. That's good, isn't it? So if you want to quench all the fiery darts of of the enemy that he throws at you constantly, then we have to use the shield of faith. Then Romans 5, 1 and 2 says that we are justified by faith. We have peace with God. How many people tonight don't have peace? I mean, they can't sleep. They're nervous. They, they lay and wring their hands at night and can't sleep at all, and they got to have this to... The, the, the build them up and this pill to take to build them up and this pill to do this and do that because there is such anxiety in the world today. But therefore, being justified by faith, we can have peace with God even in troubled times. And then in verse 2, it says we have access to God by faith. That's like going to a movie. You buy a ticket that gets you into the movie. Well, like the ticket is to the movie, Faith is to God or to, uh, 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 is the access to God. We use faith and it gives us access to God. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith. So we're in a fight. But it's called the good fight of faith. You know why? Because we overcome, we win. Now the faith fight is simply this. Listen to this. The faith fight is to stay in the arena of the unseen. See, the devil, he deals out here in this sense world. You have five physical senses, sight, smell, taste, hearing, feeling. That's what he deals in. God doesn't deal in that. Everything that God talks about uh, exists somewhere. It just exists in the unseen world. It exists where you cannot see it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the faith fight is to stay in the arena of the unseen. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporary, subject to change, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So what are we to look at? Things that are not seen or perceived by our five physical senses. The only evidence that you have, what you're believing for, is the Word of God. That's the only evidence that you have is looking to the Word of God. So, that's what the faith fight is all about. The devil wants you to keep you looking at, at, the, at the scene. He wants you to keep you looking at the doctor's reports or how much money you have in the bank. Keep you looking at your job situation. Keep, it, keep you looking at what's going on in our culture and in our society. Get you looking at that all the time. God said, don't look at that, meaning don't let that determine what you can do or you can have relative to God. Don't look at that to determine whether you have victory or not. Our victory is in our relationship with God and what God said. And the devil always wants you to go in the feeling realm. Well, I don't feel any better. Come on now. Some people might take it, tell you that you don't look any better. <laughs> you know, they say the money is just tight this week. I just don't know how I'm going to make it. Satan always wants to keep you in the arena of sight. Now, it's good to know how much money you have in the bank. But I don't use that to determine where I am relative to God and what I can do. I don't let that determine whether I'm blessed or not. I'm blessed regardless of what I got in my bank account. And God said he daily loads us with benefits. Amen. And every day I expect a blessing. How many of you expect a blessing? I expect God to show himself in my behalf. I expect God to do great things. That's where I put my faith, my expectation. 
I believe that God will do exactly what he said in his word he will do. And I just cast my bread upon the water and it comes back after many days. I look for blessings. I expect a miracle every day. Say that. I expect a miracle every day. I don't anticipate bad things happening to me. I don't even see that. I don't imagine that. And I, I just look to the word of God. I expect God to honor his word. Because you know what? I love the ministry. I love the word of God. And I love people. And God is going to give back everything I give and more. I primarily give because I love God. But understand that the devil wants you to stay in that arena of the, of the seen world. But you have to come out of that arena of the seen world and, and look at the unseen. That's where faith works. A lot of people, I've been teaching faith for nearly 50 years and some people still don't get it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says, Casting down imagination and every high thought that exalted itself against the knowledge or the word of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, when you're dealing with the things in the imagination realm that is contrary to the word of God, that's the seen world. We look at the seen world and then we see what's going on because we got eyes, we got ears to hear. And if we're not careful, we're operating over there through those five physical senses and we forget what the Word of God says irrespective of what we see in the natural. And see, that's where the devil primarily works. That's where he operates is in that seen world. And you know, if you operate in that seen world and you walk by that, it creates anxiety. Nervousness, despair, despondency, depression, anxiety, panic. And faith cannot work in that environment. So everything in the natural would, that the enemy would bring your way, you have, to, you have to overcome it through faith and your convictions. And you have to cast it down. You have to bring that thought into captivity and say, I won't think that. No, I won't imagine that. I don't imagine myself going broke. I used to see myself broke. I used to see myself sick. I used to see myself whipped. I used to see myself defeated because that's primarily what I was taught in church. We're going to get it all on the other side one day in the sweet by and by. Well, that's going to be a wonderful time over there, isn't it? It's going to be a great time. I'm not minimizing that, but I'm here to tell you I want some ham in the now. And we can be blessed. God said we could. But everything we receive from God, it has to be by faith. And I throw everything down. I take it and replace it. See, you just don't cast down a thought. You've got to replace it with something. You've got to put the word of God up there. The devil says you're going to die. You're going to die early. You're going to have to cast that down, replace it with the word of God that said, I'll live and not die. The devil says you're going broke. You cast that down said, I won't think on that. What do you think on? The word of God. My God meets my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So think on things that are just, pure, lovely, honest, of a good report. See, the devil wants you to operate over there in that seen world. Now look at Romans chapter 4 and look at verse 17. Romans 4, 17. As it is written... I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickeneth the dead or maketh alive the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Verse 18. Who against hope, or really it should say that is contrary to hope, who what is contrary to hope, Abraham believed in hope, that he might become. He believed and became. Do you see that? He believed and became the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He believed and became. 
See, those things that are contrary to your hope, you have to, you have, to have your hope, but you have to add to that hope faith. And, you, and hope, faith comes through the Word of God. If your hope is not coming from the Word of God, you don't have real hope that will weather the storm that comes your way. Abraham, hope came from the Word of God. The Word produces hope. See, hope is an expectation. That's what it means. It's an it's a image. It's a picture. It's favorable expectation. How many of you have a favorable expectation? <laughs> then you put faith to that hope. It says here, in hope he believed. That's how he became the father of many nations. That's how we become prosperous. That's how we become healed. We believe and we become. We believe and we become. You've got to expect God to do things for you that nobody else can do. And it's obtained through faith. You reach out there in that unseen world that you can't see it with your eyes, you can't hear, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, but you pull it into the seen realm by believing God's Word. That's the only evidence that you have and you stand on the Word of God. The Word is our evidence. What other kind of evidence do, do we need? Do we believe God or not to believe God? If God said it, He'll do it. If He spoke it, He'll bring it to pass. Is that right? So he became, he believed and became. God's word says you got to believe his word. See, your hope rises because of the word of God. So then you become, I am what God says I am. Say that, I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can have what God says I can have. You won't ever hear a message any more important to the Christian walk that I'm giving you tonight. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Look at verse 19, Romans 4. It says, And being not weak in faith. I don't want my faith to be weak, do you? And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered, what? Not at the promises of God through unbelief. He didn't stagger. Well, maybe God will do it. I don't know. Maybe he won't do it. Maybe he'll do what he said, but you know, you never can tell what God's going to do. No, that's not true. We know what God will do. He tells us in his word what he'll do. But he was strong in faith and giving glory to God. Let's lift our hands and give God some glory right now. He was strong in faith. And being fully persuaded, fully persuaded, he wasn't partly persuaded. He was convinced. He had an a, a expectation. He was believing and he became. Staggered not at the promises, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And look at the being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. See, he, he went by what was promised. He didn't go by what he saw because Sarah's 90, Abraham's 100. They're beyond having children to age. You know, I can see him going to the gynecologist right now and he says, I want you to examine my wife. said, I think she's pregnant. And so the doctor calls for the little white paddy wagon and said, come, I, 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 I want to refer you to another kind of doctor. Can't you just see that? But see, the only thing, evidence he had was the promises of God. God said, I'm going to give you a son. He says, out of that son, they're going to make you a, a nation. As your seed shall be, as the stars is, as the sand on the sea. That's how many your seed's going to be. Well, in the natural, he couldn't see that. But he had the promise. He had the promise. We got a lap full of promises tonight. 
We got to get back to operating in faith and believing God and we can become. We can become healed. We can become prosperous. We can become victorious by believing in the word of God. We walk by faith and not by sight and that's how we are to live, by faith. Woo, glory to God. Mm, I get excited about that. So if you're not looking at your own body, what are you going to look at? You're going to look at the word of God. He kept his eyes on what God said. Just look over somebody behind you, in front of you. It said, keep your eyes on what God said. Now, I can give you a little clue right now. You are not going to keep your eyes on what God said if you're watching the news all the time. See, I have to meddle. Every time I preach, I got to meddle a little bit. But it's true. If you look at that negative stuff all the time, you look at it day and you look at it night, it will rob you of your faith. I'm not saying we shouldn't be informed on what's going on. I'm not meaning you can't ever watch it. But I'm just saying if you want your faith strong, Abraham was strong in faith. He was not weak in faith. Because if you look at the natural and all that's going on, it'll produce weak faith. Or maybe even no faith at all if you watch enough of it. But if you'll watch the Word of God, keep your eyes on the Word of God, tune into the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, put the Word of God in your heart, your faith will become strong. You believe and you become. Now, you got to stay out of that seen world and stay in the unseen world. Now, there are components of faith and I want to remind you of some of those components for faith to work properly. How many of you want your faith to work properly? I'm going to start with probably the biggest one. The, the love walk. Say the love walk. Does not the Bible say faith Works by what? Faith works by giving to God. That can be a part of it. But if you want your faith to work in it, every area, you got to walk in love. Woo. So I cannot expect my faith to work when I'm always in strife with somebody. Always in contention with somebody. Always arguing about something. And bickering with somebody. I can't stand so and so. You ever heard that? I don't want anything to do with them. How can I expect my faith to work? Faith works by love. And we have to love people. It is a commandment that we love one another. It's not a suggestion, folks. It, this commandment I leave with you, it's a commandment. The commandment of love. We're commanded to love one another. We have to love people. And I know when you walk in love, it causes us to be vulnerable to hurts. Because people are going to hurt you. But that don't mean that you quit loving people because somebody's hurt you. We've all been hurt. How many ever been hurt? You don't have to raise your hand. But we've all been hurt, haven't we? Does that mean we just toss people off and we don't love people? No, we're commanded to love one another. In fact, I believe it's the Amplified Bible in the 13th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians, the love chapter. It says, love, listen to this now. Read my lips. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. What verse is that? Love, verse 5, in the Amplified. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I didn't put it down for them to put it up on screen. But that's the love chapter, referred to as the love chapter. But it says, love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. You talk about me like a dog? If I'm walking, big deal. They talked about Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Come on now. 
I'm talking about walking in love. I'm talking about getting our faith to work properly. Amen. So we have to walk in love. Say this. Say this right here. If I want my faith to work, I got to walk in love. Say, I got to love everybody. Say, in every situation. No if, and, and buts. But I have to love everybody. And say this, I have to forgive everybody because that's a part of walking in love. Another component of faith, this is important, action. Faith without works, James says. Faith without works is what? But let me give you a little better translation of that. I believe it may be the Amplified that says this. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. You say you got faith, then you got to act like you got faith. Faith is an act. I mean, even when you don't feel the best in the world, you say, I believe by his stripes I'm healed. Somebody said, you're just putting on, you're just acting. That's what I'm doing. Faith is an act. Faith without corresponding action is dead. If I say I'm healed, then I got to believe and act like I'm healed. Even when I may not feel it in my body, in the seen realm, the body, I don't feel healed. But the Word says I'm healed. Jesus said by His stripes I'm healed. And that's what brings healing from the unseen to the seen. And I just keep saying what the Word says. I believe and I become. I believe and I become. I become prosperous. I become healed. I become victorious. Now, I used to be a person I worried all the time. I mean, my worried, worried. My frustrations were frustrated. My depressed was depressed. I mean, I walked around with doom and gloom and despair and agony. Boom for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. You know, I'm, you know what I mean? I just walked around like that. I believed like that. Because the church that I was, 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 was got, uh, uh, brought up in, not brought up in, but I went to after I got born again, you know, they, they say things like this. God might heal some of the time, but he don't heal all the time. Because they see somebody that was prayed for and didn't get healed. Is that your evidence that God don't heal? See, you may... Somebody may, may say they're in faith, but they might not be in faith at all. You don't know what people believe really in their heart. Only God knows. And so they said God may heal, he may not heal. And then they would say things like, it's not the will of God for everybody to be healed. I said, well, the Bible says it is. No, how come everybody ain't healed? My uncle asked me that one time. He says, he says uh, if it's God's will to heal everybody, he said, how come everybody's not healed? I said, is it God's will for everybody to be saved? Oh, yes, the Bible said that. I said, how come everybody ain't saved? Because they don't believe. woo We got to believe. We got our part to do. We've been sitting around waiting for God to do it all, and we got our part to play in it. We got to believe, and we have to speak the word, and then we have to act on the word. So my faith is, you know, I want, I want my faith to stand. How many of you want your faith to stand? Because you see, it says, if you, if you hope, if you hear the word of God, and Jesus said, and you do my word, you'll be like a man that dug deep and built his house upon the rock. And when the rain and the storm came, it stood the test. But if you build your house upon the sand, when the storms of life come, come, your house is going to fall because it was built upon sand and not upon the rock of God's Word. Because tests are going to come to every one of them. So I want my faith to stand. I don't want my faith to fall. I don't want my house to fall. I'm talking about the things of my life. I don't want, I don't want them collapsing under the pressures of life because I did not do the Word of God. James said... The blessed man is the man. Now listen, James said this, the blessed man. How many of you want to be blessed? He said the blessed man is the man, now you've got to get this, that hears the word 
and does it. Not just hear the word. You can hear the word all day long, but it's action. If you don't believe and act on what you believe, it's not going to do you any good. How many of you see that? I believe. See, you got to have action. I believe that this car key right here, after service, I can go out there and get in my automobile and I hit start because I got this key on me. And that automobile would crank up and I can pull it in reverse if I need to or forward, whichever way I'm going, and start maneuvering my way to leave the parking lot. Now, I believe, how many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? I mean, if you go to your car tonight and you got the key, you put it in the ignition or you got the key to start the car with, how many of you believe that you can start that car and you can drive out and you can go home? How many of you believe that? Let me see your hand. It's not a trick question. How many of you believe that? But see, I can believe that, but if I don't go out there and put the key in the ignition or have the key on me, I can sit there, the hell freezes over, and I'm not going anywhere. Why? Because I didn't act on what I believed. I believed the car would start. I believed the car would go. But until I put some action behind it, I'm not going anywhere. Faith without corresponding action is dead. Too many people come to church and hear the word and never do the word. Walk out and keep doing the same thing they've been doing over the years and the weeks and the months, and then they get the same results. You know, they always said that the definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing over and over and expect different results. So we have to be hearers of the word and doers of the word, not just come in here and hear only. And here's another component. We've got to speak the word of God. Jesus said, whosoever will say. How much time I got? Whosoever will say. I'm not going to get through this. Whosoever will say. You got to say it. He didn't say, whosoever think. You got to say it. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thy removed, be thy cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he thinketh. Is that what he said? Have so whatever, have whatsoever he says. Brother Hagin said you got to believe, you got to say it three times more than you believe it because in Mark 11, 23 and 24, it says saying three times and believing only one time. He says so you got to say it three times more than what you believe. So you got to keep saying it. You got to keep saying it. You got to keep saying it. And then you believe and you'll become. Believe and you'll become. Believe and you'll become. So you got to keep saying it. If you believe it, it will come. It may not come in a day. It may not come in two days. It may not come in two weeks. It may not come in two months. I have believed God for certain things that actually took me years. But I stayed with it and I saw it come to pass. You believe and you speak. Paul said, believe and speak. Therefore, we believe and we speak. So these components to faith is what makes faith work. You got to walk in love, you got to have action, and you got to speak the word of God. And let me give you this and probably the only one I can finish with. Another component of faith is patience. The Bible said, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So it's through faith and patience. See, you have to add something to your faith, faith and patience. The Bible says when you are attacked, you let patience go into play. James said, let patience have its perfect work that you may be entire and wanting nothing, lacking nothing, if you add patience with your faith. Patience, really, here's the bottom line. Stand with me. That'll make you think I'm quitting. <laughs> Patience is the ability to remain constant 
and steady in the middle of the storm. Remaining the same. How do you respond to the attacks of life? Are you steady and you remain the same during the test, during the storm? Well, I'm just tired of this. I'm not going to wait on God anymore. I'm going to take care of this one. I'm going to do it myself. I'm telling you, I'm tired of waiting. That'll cost you big time. Get impatience. So we have to have faith and patience. We have to be constant and steady. Now listen to this. What you do between the time you pray and believe until you see it come to pass or into fruition, this is where we win or lose. We pray and we believe. Now what are you going to do in between? We believe and become. You pray and it shall come to pass. Shall is future tense. That means when you pray, it may not be like the snap of your finger. Pray and it shall come to pass. So from the time you pray until the time you see it come to pass, what are you going to do? Moan and cry and bicker and complain? That stops your faith. You'll never see it come to pass. From the time you pray until you see it come to pass, what are we going to do in between? Here's one another ingredient in faith, and I'm going to quit with this one. In between, we praise God. We thank God just like Abraham. He believed, he received. He believed, he received. When his body was dead, it didn't look like it in the natural, in the seen world, but he had God's word on it. He has God's promise on it. And we got the word of God, and from the time we pray until we see it in between, praise God, we're just going to thank God, we're going to praise God, we're going to worship God just like we already got it because in the realm of faith, we already have it. It's just waiting for the manifestation from the seen, from the unseen to come to the scene. Amen. Now lift your hands and praise God. I want to see I want to see some faith in action here tonight. Come on, let's praise God. Woo! Glory to God. Ha ha ha. Say ha ha ha. <laughs> there is a laugh of faith. Whew. Laugh. Smith Wigglesworth said faith laughs at the impossibilities. Ha, 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 ha. I know what the devil said. I know what the situation says. I know what the doctor says. I know what the lawyer says. But I know what God said. But wait a minute. You can't do what God said if you don't know it. And you can't know it if you don't ever read it. See, there's a lot of components to this thing called faith, and we wonder why it don't work. We think we just say, oh, God, oh, God, I thank you, and I, you know, and I just pray, and then it don't happen. But in between, what are we doing? Complaining, murmuring, fault-finding, not walking in love, don't act on the Word, talking doubt, everything contrary to the Word of God. No. Abraham believed that God was able to perform. He was fully persuaded. I got to get you fully persuaded. I have to get myself fully persuaded that what God said he will do. God cannot lie. Do we believe that? If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Let's give him one more praise. Come on, I mean, put your hands together tonight. Let's give God some praise in the house. Let's thank God tonight. Woo! I don't know about you, but I like what Mark Hankins says in this right here. He says, this just cranks my tractor. (laughs) The Word of God. Now, I'll tell you, the Word of God, the Word of faith, brought me, my wife will tell you, from depression to the sweet person I am. (laughs) Right? Right? it brought me out of depression I was sick all of my life it brought me out of sickness to health I was poor all my life 
I know what it was as a young boy to go to school and they laugh and make fun of me because I had to throw out the soul so it wouldn't come down on the hole. I know what it is. But it brought me from that poverty mentality to I'm a blessed man today. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Everything we set our hand to is blessed of the Lord. One final, really, I mean, look, I'm not talking about patty cake. Let's really thank God for his word tonight and praise him. Put your hands together. Give God a great big shout. Come on. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Say thank you, Lord, for your word. I'm going to stay in faith. God's word is truth. You watch over your word to perform it. You're not a man that you should lie. If you said it, you'll do it. If you spoke it, you'll bring it to pass. And that settles it. That settles it. Now go ahead and thank God for what you are believing for. We're going to see it come to pass. We're going to hear testimonies it coming to pass. And God's going to get the glory. The Bible said that God uh, was glorified through Abraham's faith and believing. We glorify God when we believe and stand in faith. Glory to God. Well, I got to quit because this cranks my tractor and I can go right on and on and on. And turn and tell your neighbor, say, I sure am glad. Listen. Say, I'm sure I'm glad you came tonight. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to a little sneak purview. Pastor Michael asked me to preach this coming Sunday. And I'm going to talk about understanding the times and reading the signs. You do not want to miss it. Bring your neighbor. Bring your cousin. Bring anybody. If it'll breathe, bring them. And we're going we're gonna to learn some things and we're going to grow into things of God. Thank you for being here tonight and listening to the Word of God. I love you and see you Sunday morning. Oh, the ushers are going. Do what? She's got a testimony she'd like to take to you. Glory. Quick testimony. Come on, right, real quick. Okay. This, this past Sunday.